Over recent years, terrorism occupied the central stage uh, within the security debate. Many will probably recall the 9-11 incident, the 7-7 bombing in London, the Charlie Hebdo in Paris, and many other incidents across the globe. We often try to understand terrorism based on how it's framed, yet the reality is far more complex than what it seems. Up until now, terrorism remained a widely debated subject. So in this video, I'll speak about how status view terrorism and how terrorism has been used historically. There's a widespread tendency nowadays by many staters to represent terrorism as a strategy used by some sorts of clandestine agents. For instance, the State Department defined terrorism as a premeditated, politically motivated violence perpetrated against non-combatant targets by subnational groups and clandestine agents, usually to influence an audience. And we can say that since 9-11, many policymakers and state representatives share this view. This notable definition is a clear example of how the state is trying to make sense of terrorism by already predefining the perpetrator as a subnational group or clandestine agent. Well, in reality, terrorism is not self-evident, which means that people or groups who use this type of violence do not describe themselves as terrorists. The term is never voluntarily adopted by any individual or group. This led to the famous expression that one man's terrorist is another freedom fighter. I'll give a couple of examples. During the apartheid in South Africa, the white minority introduced a policy of marginalization and repression of native South African, Indian and mixed race. When the African National Congress decided to take up arms, to fight against what they saw as a repressive government, they were labeled as terrorist organization both by the State Department and the apartheid government. In fact, Nelson Mandela was considered a terrorist up until 2008 by the US government. And the second example, the conflict in Ireland started when the British decided to split up the country into two. The South, which was mainly Catholic, wanted a united island, but part of the North, which was Protestant, wanted to remain part of the United Kingdom. As a result, the Irish Republican Army was formed. In the eyes of the British government, the Irish Republican Army was a proscribed terrorist group, but the Irish Republican Army saw themselves as a nationalist group. Other examples where one man terrorist was considered by others as freedom fighters include the Palestinian Liberation Organization, the PKK, Al-Shabaab, the Islamic State, and many more. These examples, amongst many others, illustrate how terrorism is not that simple and evident. Historically speaking, status were the biggest producer of terror. The term terrorism was first used to describe the directed violence, the state's directed violence against citizens during the French Revolution. The first dictionary described terrorism as a système de terreur, which means institutionalized violence. And I will give two examples. When Joseph Stalin ruled over the Soviet Union, he used violence to crush his opponent as well as suspected opponents. The secret police were empowered to judge, arrest and execute people on a large scale. Even members of the Communist Party were not exempt from the purge. According to Soviet archive, there were some 700,000 executions, roughly 1 million dead due to forced labor and another million to famine. The second example is King Leopold II of Belgium. Between 1885 and 1908, he acquired the Congo as his personal property. He introduced a series of forced labor to extract natural resources, to psychologically control the Congolese population and prevent any form of uprising, widespread killing, beating and frequent body mutilation were used. As a result, it is estimated that 10 million people died because of this violence. Other examples of state terrorism where thousands and millions died include Pol Pot of Cambodia, Emperor Nero of Rome, Mao Zedong and the list goes on. There are three points I'd like to make. First of all, terrorism is not that obvious. Nobody goes on the street and describes himself as terrorist. The second point I would like to make is what we call terrorism or terrorist may be called something else by other people and vice versa. The third element is well, how the state have labeled other people as terrorists. Historically speaking, states were the biggest producer of terrorism and statistically speaking, state terrorism have killed more people than what we call non-state or clandestine terrorism. 